Joining us, I'm Amy Burkett. For the first time, Charlotte Mecklenburg School District is dealing with a fatal shooting inside one of its schools. For the first time, the schools are looking not just at how to keep students safe from outsiders, but also how to keep students safe from each other. Our story is part of our PBS Charlotte series on school safety and gun violence, Generation Under Fire. PBS Charlotte's Jeff Sonier is outside Butler High School in Matthews, where a typical school day turned into a chaotic crime scene. Yeah, so how do you stop those conflicts between kids that start off campus from escalating on campus? How do you tell what's bullying and what's not bullying? And how do you keep kids safe from violence while also keeping parents informed when there is violence? How do you keep teenagers from bringing a gun to school, from using a gun at school? Here at Butler High School, the answer to all those questions, no matter what those answers are, well, they, they all come too late. We've shown you how cops spend hours training for when it happens. How schools spend millions safeguarding so it never happens. I, I don't think there's enough money out there to fully fence, lock down, secure, you know, deploy every single technology that's out there, and, and we probably wouldn't want to do that. We feel good about the investments that are being made. But then there's a fight, and then there's a gun, and then there's a teenager dead and another one in jail, and since then, plenty of blame to go around. You know, they come tell us that our son passed, but nobody can tell us that a situation was brewing. I will tell you that, you know, from one perspective, yes, we failed. Um, maybe we didn't intervene early enough in a bullying situation. I don't really know what took place. I don't know how a young person gets a handgun in the state of North Carolina. Yesterday, we were all struck by a tragedy with the shoot shooting at Butler High. Our entire area is grieving. And while parents plead for safety in our schools, while preachers pray for safety in our schools, and we uh, will continue to pray for ways to avoid those things, uh, those kinds of incidents in the future. And I will ask us to take a moment of silence in memory of the victim, the families, the students and staff at Butler, and also everyone affected by the loss of life due to violence in one of our schools. If you would now bow your head. Maybe we should also listen to what our kids say. Our thoughts and prayers did not prevent these tragedies, and our moments of silence do not bring back dead kids. So yeah, I'm angry, and you should be too. Luke Drago goes to Ardry Kell High School, and the day after the fatal shooting at Butler High, Frankly, at this school board meeting, no he had his moment on all the local newscasts. We are sitting ducks, sitting ducks, sitting ducks. But that's not all this high school junior told the CMS board members, so we thought you should hear more. I'm here today to beg CMS for my life and for the lives of my fellow students. Yesterday, Bobby McKeithen was shot and killed at Butler High School. We have allowed this to become normal. And in many ways, CMS is failing its students in preventing these kinds of tragedies. More about what he sees in school every day. Every morning, my school packs every student that arrives at 6.55 into the mall area. One of our teachers sits there or stands there and pushes us as close together as possible. We stand there in an open space with seven direct entrances that are all unlocked. The same occurs during our lunch, where students are packed into the same area with the same lack of security. We have no metal detectors. We have no panic buttons. Frankly, we have very little to no safety, and there is nothing in my school preventing a student or stranger from walking in and allowing the same events that occurred yesterday to occur again. Nothing. CMS did not fail from one perspective. CMS failed from every perspective. The inexcusable reaction this district has had to years of warning and years of shooting around the nation is at best negligent and at worst criminal. You know, we've lost some young lives, and nothing could be more tragic. There were hundreds of kids in the hallways who witnessed what took place, and their families are hurting as well. And we want them to know as a school system, we're incredibly sorry that events escalated to the level that they did. Last evening, there was a vigil that was held that gave some people the peace and solace that they were looking for, and we will come back better and stronger for this.
we have a lot of work to do as a school system. And we will get that work done over time. As easily as anyone can walk into a store, anyone can walk into my school. Drago, meanwhile, says he supports all the things that CMS is already doing. More school security personnel, more active survival drills, more access to mental health resources. But he's also urging CMS to do the one thing that so far they refuse to do. Members of the board, implement metal detectors and security wands so we can stop these shootings before they occur. My school is not a shooting range. Do something to fix it. You know, right after the fatal shootings here at Butler, the Charlotte Observer ran an editorial that said that uh, metal detectors are not the answer, that they won't stop a student with a gun out in a school parking lot or someone with uh, mental illness who's got a weapon outside a school entrance, that they won't stop the worst case scenario. And, and they're right. In fact, even supporters of metal detectors say that uh, while they won't solve every gun problem at schools, they might solve some of the problems, and uh, maybe that's what we need right now, to fix what we can and to keep on working on what we can't fix. In the meantime, school superintendent Clayton Wilcox says he's going to take a second look at uh, metal detectors and all the school's security measures over the next weeks and months after what happened here at Butler. Amy? Thanks so much, Jeff. Jatuan Cuffey is the 16-year-old freshman at Butler High, now accused of first-degree murder. He's being held at the Mecklenburg County Jail without bond. The victim of the Butler High shooting, 16-year-old sophomore Bobby McKeithen, was buried by his family in Newburn. Like it or not, toll roads are coming to